What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Midwest Outdoors podcast. As you can see, we have a little different uh, setup this week. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Bluegill himself, Troy Peterson. Troy, what's going on? Nothing. I appreciate you guys coming to the boathouse. Hey, this is a pretty cool, cool setup here, you know? I know the cameras might not be able to see right now, but I like your uh, no fishing buoys we're sitting <laughs> under right now. Got to add a little, you know, fishing theme. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you guys can't tell, uh, shout out real quick to Seagar. This show is brought to you by Seagar Fishing Line. And, you know, everything, it seems like, comes down to line sometimes, right? fishing sayings like hook, line, and sinker, um, talking about whether it was a knot problem or if you got bit off, right? Or, um, you know, I feel like just always, line is just always coming up in conversation about fishing, but yet we don't sit down ever like this and really just talk about its importance and all the different uses of it. Yeah, you know, line is one of your fundamentals to fish, right? Without Absolutely. a line, I don't, you know, you're doing some spear fishing, you know, guys can do a little bit of netting or whatnot, but uh, without line, even spear fishing, there's a line, line attached, attached Absolutely. to your spear fish. So Absolutely. line truly is, I always tell people, it is the most important thing that is so often overlooked when it comes time to fishing. Absolutely. Um, it, and it's it can be simple things or I think today we're gonna to learn some more in-depth things about line, right? Yep, you know, you can go back when we were kids, right? You just buy a big spool of what was on the on the, on the shelf mm -hmm. and you'd put it on a, a fishing reel or whatnot and you'd go and try and fish and it would come off like a slinky, right? We've all been there, we've all done that. Yep. And, you know, through the advancement of technology and, you know, just through companies, um, companies like Seagar that have been, you know, the leaders in fluorocarbon forever, um, there are so many different aspects that are geared specifically towards each style of fishing that you're going to do. Absolutely. And hopefully we can try and cover some of that today. Yeah, I think we will. You know, um, here in the Midwest alone, we have so many different fishing opportunities, you know, from rivers, lakes, to ponds, to the Great Lakes, um, but also the size of the fish and all these different tactics, whether you're using spinning, bait casting, um, you know, top water fishing to sinker fishing. You can use any of these lines really for each specific technique. If you're drop shotting, there's one or two different lines we'll talk about that are probably more geared towards that. Or if you're fishing top water, you want something that floats, you know, so we're gonna talk all about different um, different components of these lines and different ways to use them. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and for years, Seagar has been known as the leader in fluorocarbon. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what they have been known for. And truthfully, um, their braids are absolutely some of the best. And sure. one of the lines we're gonna, you know, talk about, we can kind of start out too, if you like, is, yeah. um, you know, the Japanese direct market, JDM lines um, that Seagar has brought in, uh, the Japanese have been very influential on development when it comes time to baits, techniques, lines. And this new PEX8 braid, uh, you know, when you, you, I fish every day, a lot of people fish. Some people probably wouldn't know the difference between that or a fire line, right? Sure. Uh, but once you start fishing and you're looking for something to advance yourself, mm -hmm. um, when they first sent me this and I put it on a spool, the first thing I noticed is how dramatically thin it was compared to the SmackDown, which was one of the thinnest braids ever to hit the market. Yeah. Um, so I was a little skeptical on, all right, it's really thin. I mean, we're talking microscopic, but still maintaining the same strength as what something that's 30% thicker. Um, so I'm like, all right, we'll try it. It was like a kid in a candy store. I, you Super know, smooth. every single person that I've talked to that has tried that line yeah. was like, wow, this is a game changer. I mean, and it's hard to explain that without going out and using it. Uh, but when we're trying to outsmart some of these fish, I do a lot of walleye fishing. Sure. So we're fishing really, you know, shallow water a lot of times. And, uh, you know, we're fishing a lot of rivers and currents. 
So we're always looking for something that we can do either really long casts to mm -hmm. get the, the baits away from the boat. Um, with that, you know, thin line, something that's really smooth that'll go through the guides, this stuff casts a mile. Mm -hmm. So it's very applicable for that part. But then fishing in the rivers, you know, when you're trying to vertical jig in a river, uh, you know, you want to have the, le the least amount of resistance as you possibly can get. So you don't get that bow. You, know, you want to try yeah. and keep your baits perfectly vertical underneath the boat. So if you're using a thick line, you know, I'm just going to example. Sure. You try and vertical jig and current with this thing, you know, that thing's going to be 40 feet behind the boat to, yeah. before your jig hits the bottom. This stuff is like sewing thread and you drop it down and there's absolutely no bow. Uh, and yet it is extremely strong, um, very sensitive. And the fact that it's, you know, bright in color too, allows you to kind of see everything. Some high but, vis. Yeah, it oh, is. Yeah. It truly has become a game changer in my arsenal. It's changed how I fish. And it's also, I mean, again, talking to bass guys and people that were using it on the Elite Series and that, mm -hmm. um, you go through and you look at all the different guys on the on the tour, just look at the colors of their lines once, because that'll usually tell you every brand's kind of got their own little own little color. Tints or colors, yeah. yeah. And uh, you start looking at some of the guys throwing cigar and all their braids went from, here, oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah, I already see So it. you got the pink, right? And in the past, a lot of the guys that were throwing the uh, SmackDown, um, you know, is that high vis green. So this used to be my favorite, but uh, this has very truly become a game changer for fishing. And you know, something I wanted to talk about this X8 is, I think it's a little niche for uh, the average viewer, but something that I've found really interesting, um, speaking of JDM, is BFS fishing. You know, um, super lightweight, on casting gear. Mm -hmm. So these microscopic 164th ounce, 180th ounce baits on casting gear, and you use this super finesse, um, less resistant line, you know, and you can get those long casts. And that's a different way of, you know, fishing ultralight size baits without spinning gear that really in the past hasn't been, you haven't been able to do. Correct. Yep. So I'm intrigued to use this for sure this year. Speaking of great braids though, just because the X8's here, that doesn't mean we can't abandon the SmackDown because there's still plenty of times that you'd want to use the SmackDown. No, absolutely. You know, again, Seagar has been here. When it comes time to price point, they have been the premium. But it doesn't mean that they don't make stuff that's more price friendly and more price per, you know price point uh, centric. Yeah. And the SmackDown truthfully fits that bill. Sure. Uh, this setup right here, you know, you got the SmackDown with a gold label leader. Yep. Has been used by more guys probably than any other combination that I know of. Um, it really is the winning combination. This gold labor leader material is, you know, some of the softest. It's a lot thinner than what, you know, let's say this is a 10 pound, right? It's sure. equivalent to probably, um, oh, if you were to have to go to a, a monofilament um, to get the strength of this, you'd probably have to go up to like a 15 pound. Okay. Um, so it's a lot thinner, a lot stronger to weight ratio than what the competition does. So, sure. and what, you know, we're always trying to make the baits look as natural as, as possible. possible. And right. you're only going to do that by trying to use the thinnest stuff that you possibly can. But as far as the SmackDown goes, you know, this stuff is amazing. It casts so well, um, very, very abrasion resistant, great knot strength. And, uh, you know, the high, again, the high vis is, is a pretty cool deal for me because I do a lot of jig fishing, sure. but they also make a smoke gray, you yep. know, for the guys who are looking for more stealthier stuff, but uh, one of the best. Yeah, I really like, you know, just to make a comment on that gray versus green, I really like the green um, for frog fishing and stuff like that. You know, when you're on top of it, it helps you see the line a little more and it doesn't matter to the fish as much, but that gray sometimes if I'm like punching, right, that gray with the darkness down there, they can barely see anything, yep. so. Yeah, it's almost like a f invisible braid. Exactly, exactly. So there are times to change up your color, you know, but um, either way, it's a safe bet to go with that combo right there. And not only, like you said, thin line on the, on the floor car makes sense, but that key word you said, soft. When it's soft, it's not as rigid and lets that bait fall more naturally and such like that. Yep. One thing that a lot of people I, I think 
lose focus on when it comes time to fluorocarbon too is why fluorocarbon versus monofilament? And everybody thinks first thing is fluorocarbon disappears underwater, which is true. I mean, sure. it is 100% yep. invis or invisible underwater, but it has different properties that monofilament does not. Fluorocarbon line fishes more like braid. There's not as much stretch with fluorocarbon. So when you start looking at mainline fluorocarbon, you know, like the, uh, you know, the new JDM fluorocarbon that they have, or, you know, the, the Tatsu is one of the favorites for a lot of the bass guys. Yep. This is a line, it's not a leader material. This you fit your whole spool. Yep. Um, so you're fishing, a, you know, a clear line that is going to be, um, very abrasion resistant. It has, you know, very little stretch compared to uh, monofilament. Uh, the knot strength, the, you know, just everything about it is really close to braid, um, but you have that invisible factor. But one of the key things is that fluorocarbon sinks. Yes. And that's what I think a lot of people don't remember is there are gonna be instances where you don't want your baits to fall and you want them to, you know, stay neutral kind of buoyant. Yep. Or if you're frog fishing top water stuff, you know, then you're gonna either wanna fish a braid or you're gonna want to find a uh, monofilament um, that is going to stay up and float versus sink. Exactly. Um, and on the same regards, there's things you need that extra weight for. You Absolutely. Know? I, can't, I can't even begin to explain to people if you use a light wire hook um, for wacky worm fishing, you know, um, you know, the Gary Yamamoto Sanko, everyone knows a little heavier than most, right? So that one's going to fall almost no matter what you use as line. But a, a lot of the lighter styles, flukes or, or Sanko style bait, you use mono or braid with that, your bait's pretty much just sitting right at the surface or yep. just right below the surface, <laughs> yep. you know? So you want, again, you want to make that bait look as natural as possible. So that's why knowing which lines to use or the properties of each line are super important. Yep. And so when you when you get in, I'll, I'll say this first: if you're you know undecided on what you really want to get for a line, Seaguar's website makes a line choice. There's like a line selection. Yeah, right? yeah. It'll selector. go through and it'll tell you, all right, this one's going to have great knot strength. Um, it's going to be a little bit less easy to cast, or vice versa. You know, if you're looking for really good leader material, you can pick out your leaders versus full spool fluorocarbons. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, as we get into some of the more price point uh, centric lines, uh, last year they came out with a couple of new ones. Um, they've got their tactics and their basics. Um, you know, again, phenomenal lines and they're not gonna break the bank. Uh, and then one of the new leaders that are gonna come out this year for 25 is the new Pounce. This is gonna be a very, um, they're claiming it to be one of the most bulletproof fluorocarbon leaders on the market basically geared for the bass guy, the guys that are gonna be fishing in timber, weeds, you know, stuff that they really need, that really heavy abrasion resistance, great knot strength, but I and think I you're told like- And I even better, it's cheap. It's, yeah, it's like eight bucks a spool. It's cheap, guys. Um, so it's very, very price uh, effective, and it is a great line. Um, is it gold label? No, but you know, when you're fishing bass, you're fishing, what, let's just say you got a three eighths ounce jig on, yep. you're not finessing a, a right. three eighths ounce they, jig. They're not seeing that line You're punching this through some weed, some heavy cover. Ripping it out. Yeah, so yeah. you're not looking for something that's gonna float nice. You know, that's where this is. Yep. Uh, whereas the gold label is gonna be super soft, very lightweight, uh, more for that finesse style fisherman. Um, so again, every line has its place in your tackle box. Yeah. And speaking of floral leaders um, and new products, there might be even one that's even above them all, I hear. So the, um, the, the Grand Max, yeah. um, again, is one of the new JDM lines. This stuff here, when it comes time to soft, um, this brings a whole new meaning to soft. I mean, it's like cotton soft. You're gonna be able to really finesse uh, fish with this stuff. Again, it's a leader material. It's not meant for filling a whole spool. Yep. Um, You're not getting a whole big, you know, don't, don't get sad if you buy a spool of this and you can't fill your reel. That's not the point with the <laughs> pounce or the Grand Max. Right, so you're, you know, you're talking 66 yards on a spool of leader material. Um, so you, you know, most, most guys are gonna run what a three to five foot uh, leader, leader for usually. most for the most part. Um, and again, the JDM stuff is at the top premium. I mean, this is gonna be for the diehard, most serious angler. Um, I don't want, 
a guy that's just getting into fish and thinking that, all right, if I buy the best of everything, um, is it going to help me catch fish? Sure, but you don't have to spend the money uh, to really get going. Experiment with some of the other stuff first, and then as you progress as an angler, that's when you're gonna start to really understand why you need this uh, versus you know, uh, you know, like a, a gold label or a red label, blue label, some of the other uh, fluorocarbons that are out there. Yeah, I mean, and a perfect example of, of that is the Tatsu line. You know, uh, the first time it came out, I won't lie, Seagar, I was a little sticker shocked, right? Well, the first <laughs> time that came out because line had not been a premium item yet, you know, yep. at least here in America, right? We were a little behind it because it had been overseas. Um, and I said, you know, you can't get convince me to buy a line that's double the price as whatever else is on the market until I had to use it, right? I ha that was all that was available and I used it and I said, oh, well, I get it now. Yep. You know, um, when you can tie your knots quicker, right? When you don't have to worry about your loops unlooping because the memory in the line. Yep. Um, when your drop shot actually, the bait is actually presented straight, right? Because you don't have a bow or any memory in that line. I mean, these are all things that, Yes, maybe to the guy that fishes twice a year, you don't need to buy you know, an upgraded line like that. But if this is how you spend your time, if this is how you hobby, if you're a tournament angler, it's, it pays to play. It, it definitely pays to play. You know, for guys that have never you know, used a, a full reel, um, full spool fluorocarbon, you know, that Tatsu, um, you, you hear a lot of people that have used it for the first time, they're just like, this stuff is like crack. I mean, because most guys are used to fishing a, a monofilament mm -hmm. for that style of fishing. Um, but to find a fluorocarbon that you can cast, you know, for an entire season and not get any memory built up, and yet it still retains, you know, like you say, I got four pound here. I use that a lot for crappie fishing and um, smallies and that uh, up in the bay. Yeah. Um, you know, you get into the six, eight pound, you can really uh, do a lot of damage with that stuff. It does not matter if you're fishing finesse stuff and you're trying to drop shot, like you say, your line is perfectly straight. There is no wiggle, there is no loop, there's nothing. Right. The lightest tackle, your line stays straight. And you can't do that with a monofilament. I mean, especially if you got it sitting on your spool and it's in your rod locker for a couple of weeks and you get it back out, you pull it off your spool and you get that slinky effect. And that's stuff that you're not gonna get when you buy premium stuff. Absolutely. And you know, we don't have it up right now, but I think when the average angler, I, at least I know me and my friends, I think this falls under us. When we think Seaguar, um, really the Seaguar line is everywhere, um, but you normally see uh, Brazex or Red Label, I'd say. Yep. You know, those are the two I grew up on. That Red Label was the first fluorocarbon I bought, again, because of price, right? It was one of the more affordable ones. Yep. But you felt the stiffness of it, um, and I thought that's how all fluorocarbon was until you get to play a little bit. Um, but we don't have those up to talk about today, but we have two lines here that um, have come out in the last couple of years that I feel like don't get as much uh, love and respect as they could. So I want to tell the people about them a little more. Sure. So if you're a musky guy or a bass guy, or even I've talked about this line here for ice fishing. Um, I was fortunate enough to test it before they uh, brought it to market. And one of the first things that I really kind of keyed in on was the fact that when you feel this line, um, it's got like a, a serrated edge to it. So if you're fishing really heavy cover, mm -hmm. um, you know, a standard braid is typically really smooth, right? Yeah. So when you try and rip it through the weeds, it usually just gets hung up even more. Sure. This stuff with the serrated edge, when you're sitting there and almost like a saw going back yeah. and forth, it just cuts through the weeds. So Not that was one of the first things I noticed. And when we started fishing with it, fishing through the weeds, I was able to rip stuff through the weeds and it just sliced right through everything. Feels like Kevlar line almost. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is one thing. And I run this stuff exclusively for my for my musky rods. Gotcha. Um, especially for my weed, you know, fishing bucktails and that through the weeds. Mm -hmm. I can rip that through the weeds and I do not have to worry about uh, getting a bunch of stuff caught on it. It just kind of nice right through it. But it is very inexpensive. You know, for a, for a braid, it casts nice. It's very strong. I've never had to worry about break-offs. Um, there's just a lot of benefits for the tactics line, yeah. uh, for the guys that are doing, you know, that heavy cover, weed, timber, whatnot. Um, and, you know, they've got multiple uh, diameters for this as well. But the 80-pound is one of my favorites that I use for, uh, for musky fishing. Um, just an overall great inexpensive braid. 
and I'll say this, you said bass, I'm a big swim bait fisherman. You need that big line when you're t casting two, $300 lures. Yeah. You don't want to be losing that stuff. Yep. Um, so a uh, heavy, trustworthy line, super important. Sure. What can you tell me about this guy right here? So the basics is, again, you know, you talked about growing up, right? You were the, the red label was yeah. kind of what everybody had um, yeah. to start off with. So Seaguard a couple years ago when, you know, COVID and that came through, um, so many more anglers came to market. And uh, again, they wanted to be able to play in that entry level, you know, and that's where the name basics, you know, you start basic, right? Yeah. That's how we yeah. all started. And it is a very good basic fluorocarbon. That's, you know, I mean, there's no other way to explain it other than it's just a basic fluorocarbon. But it does very well. Um, you can fish it if you really want to fish it on a, um, a full spool, you know, casting rod or spinning rod, it does very well. Uh, it's maybe not as soft as what a Tatsu is going to be, but you sure. know, this is a multi-coated line or a multi-produced line where this is going to be more straight. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's very strong. It's a very soft. Um, you're not going to get the memory that you're going to get with, uh, with the monofilament. Uh, and you know, for less than 20 bucks, you're getting a full spool. Yep. You, I know a lot of guys use it even for like, uh, the walleye guys will pick this stuff up, um, and use it for crawler harnesses, you okay. know, rather than using fluorocarbon or uh, monofilament, yep. um, you know, you get 200 yards in a spool. So it, uh, it's a little bit more than what, you know, a gold label is. Sure. And again, you know, you're not going to use a gold label on a crawler harness. I mean, it's something you're purposely beating up. Yeah. You're throwing you're through just, it it's not, lot. it's not worth the time and money to use uh, a good, um, leader material when you know you can you know run something like that absolutely absolutely that makes sense so we've pretty much covered the whole table except you do have that big line out there i don't know if you wanted to talk about that big yeah. line or not so a couple of uh, other lines that kind of go unnoticed um one again a few years back um Seagar really got into the ice market you yeah. know and this is their ice x line and the formulation again for fluorocarbon um, you know, most people, when they think of fluorocarbon, they think of hard, brittle, and when it gets cold, all line gets hard and brittle. Right. So they come up with a formula that allows, you know, the ice X to stay nice and soft. And, you know, and when we're fishing, right, you got a hole and your line is tick, 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 you yeah. know, going around. Yeah. You yeah. need something that's really abrasion resistant. And at first, you know, a lot of the ice anglers were using the abrase X. I mean, that's mm -hmm. kind of how they had, they even had the abrase X in the small spools for the ice guys. Gotcha. Um, but they just took it a step further and came out with the Made actual ice, ice line. X yeah. um, line. Uh, and that uh, now last year, they, I believe, leave go all the way up to 15 pound um so for guys that are looking for heavier leader material pike sure. walleyes whatnot um they did increase the sizes before that it was only up to eight um so for the panfish you know wall small sure, walleye guys sure. but it's crazy to think about that we're here uh almost in october 80 degrees but we should hopefully it's coming, pr man. pray to god it's less coming. than three months <laughs> we'll be coming. using that line three you know Here's, we were looking back, um, just a few years back, yep. we uh, have the- Thanksgiving ice, I think. Um, the Dakota Ice Institute over yeah. in Sioux Falls, yep. South Dakota with Todd. And I flew out there um, from Appleton to Sioux Falls. And it was, I believe, the first weekend in November. November, yeah. Usually. And I flew over Lake Poygan and it was completely skimmed over. Really? So in four weeks, Poygan's got to get really cold to skim over. <laughs> I don't know. We'll keep I don't know about the next four weeks, but uh. um, so this stuff here, if uh, if you're a diehard musky guy, catfish guy, you know, just any big game fish, um, this is more of their saltwater series. Their threadlock gotcha. is a hollow core braid. Uh, this stuff is like iron man this is the strongest line i guarantee you anybody anything you've ever used uh this will outfish it but it is meant for big game and yeah. it's really um it, it casts very well um being that it's a hollow core line it's very lightweight too so you can really zing this stuff out there but if we're i use it for flathead fishing when we're in the rivers in the brush if i hook into a you know 30 40 pound cat and that thing rings me around the brush I just lift. Yeah. One thing's gonna break, either the hook or the rod. Not the line. Because this, this line is not breaking. <laughs> That's um, fun. That's fun. And, and I'm glad you brought it out. Like I said, I wanna I wanna talk about all these lines from you know little tiny bluegill, which we did with some of these florals, all the way to our big flatheads, you know, or sturgeon, our big boys up yep. here, you know, in the Midwest. Yeah, and you know, this is the stuff that when you go down 
Um, I was down on the boat in Hawaii wow. fishing uh, marlin, and uh, that's every single one of the rods is spooled up with thread locks. So, yeah. I mean, it is iron line. That stuff is incredibly strong. Absolutely. So before we go to a commercial, I, we've talked all about fluoro, mono, and braid, right? I want to really break it down to the beginning level and kind of tell everyone, because some, some of our viewers I know are loving what we're talking about, but I think we need to break down what exactly mono is, what exactly braid is, and what fluorocarbon is. Sounds good. Yeah, you want to do that real quick? Let's go. So we talked about braid, right? So one thing that I don't even know the answer to is you said hollow core. So there's obviously different type of braid, huh? There are a lot of different types of braids. Um, you're going to have multi-strand braids. You're going to have, you know, four strand braids, six strand, eight strand, uh, 12 strands. This is a 16 strand. Um, so it really comes down to, um, what it, what it's going to feel like. So mm -hmm. when you, when you get into more strands, that's, what's going to give you the smoothness. Um, you know, picture a, uh, uh how do I really explain it? Something that's sewn very tightly, you know, very woven. Um, is going to be very smooth and silky sure. feeling. Sure. Whereas if you have, you know, uh, a boat rope, a boat rope that's yep. braided together, yep. I mean, that's going to be very coarse. So you take a look at the tactics, right? This sure. has got that serrated feeling. This is a four strand braid. Makes um, sense. A little rougher. A little bit rougher. Yep. Um, doesn't take away from any strength. Mm -hmm. It's really going to come down to smoothness, castability, and you know what you're going to use it for. Now, when you say four strand, right, that doesn't mean that there's just four pieces of string sure. wrapped together. When you start pulling this stuff apart, mm -hmm. um, if we can do it here, mm -hmm. I mean, again, it's a material, and you can see there's tons of tons of fibers. Ends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So each each fiber is woven and then each, and then you get the, the strand. So mm -hmm. you've got one strand, two strand, three, four strands, right? That are made up of all kinds of micro strands. So that, you know, it's people kind of misconcept, oh, there's only four pieces of line there. That sounds weak. Sure. It's not four pieces of line. It's four strands all woven together to yes. make, you know, one solid. Line. And even if there was one of these, you know, maybe the two or four pound, but anything above that, even if it was one or two strands, you're not breaking it with your hands. Oh you gosh, know? no. No, I mean, people that think they can break braid, this 80 <laughs> pound, I'm pretty certain we could have a tow, a tow competition from our vehicles right. out front, and uh, we'd probably pull each other around a little bit before it would finally snap. <laughs> you know you're officially a braid fisherman, when you cut down to your bone on your pinky. <laughs> something something about fishing a braid. If you do it enough, one day you will slice into your fingers doing something dumb. Yep. Yep. So let's take uh, this PEX8 stuff. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you've had the op opportunity to even see this stuff yet. I've seen it from afar. I haven't touched it. This is the first, well, I guess at iCast. Again, guys, um, you know, some of this line is already out right now for you to go purchase and use. Um, some of this other line will be coming out pretty much between now and Christmas. Um, so keep your eyes out for some of the newer products like Pounce and X8 and 18. All right. So I want you to feel that line if you can see it. I know the camera's going to be very hard to see it. Um, but you, you take a look at... It's what, thinner than dental floss. Oh, by, by a ton. I yes. mean, it's not even close. Yes. You would have to, you'd have to make four strands of this <laughs> and braid it together to make dental floss. Sure, sure. Um, but as you can see, you can, I mean, you can just feel it. Mm -hmm. How soft. Yeah. It's almost like fluffy, right? Yep. Um, whereas if you take a, uh, you know, let's see, you know, Smackdown. So you know, you're, you're talking, this is a 15 pound mm -hmm. and this is a 16 pound. This Look is 16 at, pound? That's 16 pound. Holy cow. I thought, because I saw the point 0.8, I thought it was eight pound, because yep. it felt like thinner than eight. Yeah, so. Wow. Look at the difference. I mean, that is a pretty good comparison though, because it's still about half the diameter. Yeah. So you're, I mean, just. And this is thicker. This, it's thinner, but it's stronger line. Yes. Yeah, that's so pretty thinner, incredible. thinner, stronger, smoother, softer. Again, what makes premium line premium. You have something that technically is, um, more weight. Yep. So you th you should think that it should be thicker. It should be stronger sure. when essentially it is probably half the thickness of what this is. Yeah. And this is 15 pounds. 
But that comes back to just some more basics of fishing, right? Um, I think at some point, if you're especially a tournament angler, bass fisherman, you start utilizing tungsten more than lead, right? Because mm -hmm. although it looks smaller, it should be lighter, it's heavier because it's just more dense. So you're just getting more bang for your buck. Yep. You know, that's what it seems like here. Um, let's see, and then... Uh... So that's braid. So braid, so to sum up braid, right? Braid is almost like a cloth material. It's strands. Yep. It's fibers. Um, and it's woven together to create its strength. And you can see it. And for the most part, it floats. I know some companies have come out with sinking braid, but for the most part, it floats. Um, good for your top water baits. Good for fishing with, uh, good for fishing for our toothy critters you know, and uh, around a lot of vegetation and stuff yeah. like that. The, the Probably the biggest thing for braid is castability. It's gonna help you cast small jigs a lot further, especially when you start getting in to that, you know, 16 strand or, you know, even the, like Smackdown's an eight strand braid. Um, again, the more strands, the smoother it's going to be, the smoother it's gonna go through your guides and you're gonna be able to fish smaller tackle. Um, but really the abrasion resistance of braid, um, you know, we've all done it, right? You try and tie a knot and you're sitting there and it's like, ah. Yeah, going back and, and you know, get the rock, get the rock yeah, out next you're to the stream. And you just can't break through it. Whereas if you take a piece of fluorocarbon or a piece of mono and put it in your teeth, it's gone. You know what I'm about through it. Yeah, is. so, I mean, when you're, fishing, you know, different structure and whatnot, and you're tying direct to your bait, um, the braid's gonna be very good for abrasion resistance. Absolutely. Now, when we're fishing small, you know, jigs and stuff for walleyes, most of the time, uh, you know, 95% of the time, uh, when you're fishing braid, you're gonna have a fluorocarbon leader behind sure. you. Um, and, you know, there's many different knots that guys tie. You've got FG knots, uh, the Albright, or, um, you know, the, uh, double uni knot, I mean, many different types of knots that you can learn to tie um, direct. Some guys will tie to a small barrel swivel. Um, so again, it's it's the style of fishing that you're gonna do. Um, but uh, yeah, abrasion resistance, castability. And here's another great tip for people too, is this stuff is very expensive. I mean, in all things considered, braid is going to be a little bit more expensive than what fluorocarbon or mono is, sure. just because of the makeup. And it lasts a lot longer. It, very, it lasts a lot longer. And if you really want to get more out of your braid, okay, you're gonna have, um, let's say you got two reels that are your favorite, right? You're gonna spool up, you're gonna put a little bit of fluorocarbon or monofilament on so it sticks to the reel because you cannot tie this stuff directly to a spool right. uh, because backing. it'll spin. You have backing. to put some sort of backing on. And because it's so much thinner, you wanna put a pretty good amount of backing on um, because this stuff will, It'll cost a lot, okay? <laughs> if you go to your tackle shop, they got spools this big and they'll just keep running that thing and running that thing until you pay $50 for a reel. It's, so. Yeah, it's half the diameter yes. of what you know equivalency is on fluorocarbon or exactly. monofilament. So it's gonna take up let, you know half the space on your spool. So you wanna fill up, you know, put enough backer on and then wind this on, right? So mm -hmm. then next year, when you know, you're getting ready to get stuff ready for the next year, what you do is you take that rod that uh, has a spool of, or that's filled up with braid. Yep. And you have another spool, a fresh spool, and you wind this stuff on backwards. Yep. So you reel it from one spool from your rod onto a new rod, because all that stuff that's at the bottom I've hasn't never seen, seen light of day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So now you've got a whole fresh new batch of, of braid on your reel, and you're not spending that extra money. You do that, you can get three, four years out of braid yep. you know, pretty easily. Yep. Unless you're like my kids and get hooked in a prop that a guy is driving by or something like that, and you lose a whole spool just like that. But or whatever. wind knots like me, or, or backlashes, <laughs> you know. But no, hey. it's true. And you know, the nice thing is about braid is it doesn't have memory. So that line at the bottom, although it's been super tight and compounded on for a year or two, uh, after a cast or two, it's like it never was there. Yep, 100%. Yep. Yep. All right. So that's braid. Um, I don't think we have any mono up here right now. So let's just talk about monofilament mm -hmm. real quick. Um, mono, the cheapest. Um, it floats. It's, it looks clear to us, but not exactly invisible under the water. Um, what can you add to that? It, it still has its application. I mean, yeah. when we're ice fishing, let's say we're ice fishing in some shallow water. Um, now I, you know, 
Seagar used to have a, a really nice amount of filament. Um, they've since discontinued. We've been begging for them to come back with a, with a new one. But in the meantime, there are some great companies out there. Uh, one of the companies I like to use is the uh, Maxima. They've got a line mm. called the Chameleon. Um, it's a very, uh, um, I almost think it's pretty invisible when it's under the water. Um, it's a very stretchy uh, monofilament. But uh, one thing when we're fishing bluegills in shallow water, ice mm -hmm. fishing, right? I don't want something that's gonna fall. I want something that's gonna go through the water. Real I mean, slow. super, super slow, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, fluorocarbon's gonna sink. I mean, yep. there's no way to get around it. Yep. And when you can pair up a really light, you know, plastic bead head jig um, with a, a monofilament to get that fall rate to go really slow, it just triggers those bluegills. Sure. You need to be able to do that. I, even, I don't care if people say, oh, I can make a tungsten jig fall slow mm -hmm. just by holding it. It's like, it's not, not the same. same. It yeah, is not, not the same. same. Not um, so there are applications that monofilament is still a necessity when you're fishing. Especially when you're, you know, you're trying to fish topwater baits or baits I was about up say, near the popper surface. Popper fishing, popper I love fishing, it. Popper yeah. fishing, fly fishing, you know, trying to keep stuff up near the surface. You don't want to have a fluorocarbon leader on a really, you know, tiny ant or something like that that's on the water for for bluegill crappie fishing, and then that fluorocarbon makes, you know, pulls that Sink bait down. Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure that everything stays up near the side. And they do have, you know, floral or monofilaments out there, but they also have some vinyl line too mm -hmm. um, that you know works really well. That floral as well yeah copolymers you yep, know some copolymer, people make yep. that stuff you know hybrid between the fluoro and the mono um and then we have fluorocarbon which i feel like in the 10 years that uh, 15 10 years that i've been really seriously fishing it's just gained popularity over every year it seems like more advancements come out with fluorocarbon uh, more lines come out like even this you know a few years ago we could look and maybe talk about one or one to three you know fluorocarbon lines and here we are with just alone two or three coming out this year you know yep um it's i, I don't want to say this wrong so correct me but it's uh fluorocarbon is more like almost chemically made right is there a process, there's a process behind how you make, how it's made? So there's very few companies in the world that actually manufacture the fluorocarbon crystals yeah. um, that are used to then be extruded into line. Seagar is, you know, I think they're, the pronunciation of their parent company is uh, Korea, uh, which is the manufacturer of the crystals themselves. Gotcha. So one thing about Seagar that a lot of other companies, whether it be you know, like Berkeley or Sunline or any of these other companies, they buy their crystals from another manufacturer and then extrude it on the machines to make the line. Seagar does from ground up. They manufacture their own crystals and they have, you know, their own extrusion machines. So they truthfully are, um, you know, one of the only lines out there that, that does that. That does it start to finish. Start to finish. So they can control everything to their specific specifications and that also allows them to, you know, develop and be instrumental well, in a lot of the fluorocarbons. That's how you come out with different lines, you know, because you think fluorocarbon, you think it's the same thing. But no, when you can change the way it's processed from the beginning or the end, yep. something's going to be different if you change any part of that process, Yep, you know. So, all right. Well, hey, this was all really good information. Um, you know, the only thing I feel like we need to do now is just fish with it. <laughs> there might be some bluegills and uh, maybe a few walleyes out in the pond. <laughs> oh boy, all right. Well guys, we're gonna take it to a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. From the company that brought innovation to the ice fishing world with their advancements in LED and glow technology, now brings you a new eco-friendly biosilicone bait that is infused with terabyte. A proprietary solution comprised of amino acid, omega-3, and pheromones that will generate more strikes, which equals more fish. For more information, visit fishdaddyoutdoors.com. 
All right, welcome back, everyone. We still have Troy Peterson, a.k.a. Mr. Bluegill here. Troy, we're going to try something different, if that's all right with you. Sounds good to me. All right, we're going to play a game brought to you by Seagar. Uh, pick your line, okay? All right. You're allowed up to two lines. I'm going to give you a scenario here in the Midwest, and you're going to tell me a line. We're going to select the line and talk about it for a minute or two and how you'd fish it, maybe the type of baits you would use, too, some stuff like that, all right? Sounds good. All righty. We have to shuffle them up. Yeah, you got a <laughs> blindfold, yeah. you know? No. Um, all right, so let's start with, we are fishing May largemouth on the Madison chain. Well, that's your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> um, so May largemouth, um, you know, we're starting to get into fish are probably going to start moving up a little shallow. Yep. Um, and the Madison chain again is super clear. Yeah. Um, so my guess is we're going to be throwing, you know, maybe some smaller baits, you know, a little bit more finesse style. Mm -hmm. um, some Ned rigs. Yep. A lot of Ned rig stuff, um, which is one of my favorite things to do. Sure. Um, you can go about it a couple different ways. If I... If I'm going to be throwing, you know, minnow style baits or swim style baits, mm -hmm. I'm going to probably be throwing, uh, you know, on a bait caster, I'll probably be throwing like a eight or a 10 pound tatsu okay. um, tied direct to the bait. Okay. And that will probably um, solve most issues and be able to fish in just about every scenario up in shallow water. Absolutely. Now, if they're maybe just a little bit deeper or I'm going to be throwing maybe into some docks or maybe there was a little bit more cover, yep. um, then I'm probably going to, up until last year, I would have been a SmackDown, but um, right. you know now I'm probably going to go to a PX8. Um, either We'll just play it this way. Either one, wise, either one, right? Either one of these two with a gold label leader. All right. um, and the braid, again, is going to allow you to fish, especially, you know, mace always tends to be windy too, right? Yeah. So one thing that uh, you'll find when you start casting braids is you're going to be able to cast so much further, get the bait away from the boat, get it far away from you um, because of how fast or how far you can cast these braids. Yeah. That is super important. Um, I did a segment actually um, on, on one of my YouTube channels specifically talking about fishing braid and wind and how much more effective it is in shallow water because you can get those baits so much further away from the boat. Because right. a lot of times, man, those, those fish are spooked by the boat more mm -hmm. than anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can get it further away, you're going you know, to have better hookup percentage. Yeah, I hear people tell me all the time. Jim, I, I don't even, I turn my big motor off, you know, way before I even get close. Uh, they, they can't hear me on the boat with live scope nowadays. I it's, can't tell you how many times. Uh, my favorite one, right, is when someone drops like a pair of pliers or their phone or something in the boat, especially if it's an aluminum boat. Yep. Boom, you see the, oh, yeah. those fish just all shoot away from the boat. Yep. So whether it's your trolling motor, your graph, your, your shoes, there's always noise coming out of a boat. So anybody that's ever fished with me knows the first thing that ever goes in my boat is a really big stereo system. Um, before I even put electronics in my boat, I always, I put my subs, my amps, and I like music. I mean, yeah, it makes for it makes a, a really bad day can be a lot of fun. That's true. And we've played around with that, with the, yeah. with the noise, right? Um, now, if you're playing some of this new 80s hip hop stuff, as soon as you turn that stuff on, fish are gone. But you put a little Conway Twitty on and those fish, just come you can watch them. Do, do, do. Oh, we're jamming out and they're swimming up close. I'm just kidding. Um, but I, yeah, I no reason. Country, country Western. Cus music, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Of that yeah. old country. Right, right. Not the new. real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to the game. Back to the game. Here we go. Uh, I think this one uh, you're going to know a little bit about. We're, we'll go Wolf River White Bass Run. What are we using? Okay, Wolf River White Bass Run. I am going to be running... Um, I think for the most part, you, a guy could run some 12 pound tactics okay. on a three way swivel. Okay. And then, uh, you know, on our leader material, you know, we'll be running, um, I don't have any here, but mm -hmm. uh, just the, like an Invisex or a red label. I yeah. mean, not just. The pounds would probably be something that could probably, yeah, fall the under this would category. Be great. Um, a 15 pound. Uh, fluorocarbon. Yep. Um, oh, know, really? That much? 15? I White bass, are, they're not 
They don't finesse. matter. Yeah. You know, you're you're ripping flies, right? Yeah. You're pumping these things as hard as you can. Um, you want something that's going to take the abrasion from their teeth, just smacking these flies just consistently. Because mm -hmm. you know, we've had Larry out, and we're catching three fish at a time. Right. You know, every single cast, um, you just need a line that is going to withstand the abrasion right. from the teeth of the fish. And you know, a pounce or a red label or something very just basic yeah. is all a guy needs. Yep. And there's no reason to get technical with any of this, um, you know, this line because you're just all you're doing is casting a, a bell sinker on a three way, and it is as basic of a fishing as you can do. Sure, sure, that sounds about right. You know, keep it simple, stupid, right? That's exactly. The whole kiss method. Okay, we are ice fishing for suspended crappie. Six feet under the ice. Okay, um, you know, there again, um, I'm probably gonna go just a straight uh, fluorocarbon, you know, straight ice X, and right here, six pound. Six pound? Um, six pound, if they're really finicky, I might drop down to a four, um, but the thing I find with crappies is, you know, especially when you get in those bigger ones, if you drop down to three, eh, I start breaking off a couple, yep. and I don't wanna risk that. No. So four or six pound, and um, probably more so a four pound with a lighter rod, sure. um, just so you have soft tip, a soft load that tip. up. Again, because the fluorocarbon doesn't stretch, you wanna make sure you pair your rods with your line. You don't wanna be fishing a medium heavy or a medium power rod with a fluorocarbon in shallow water. You're gonna set the hook, there's no stretch, you're gonna rip the bait right out of your mouth. Sure. So if you are gonna fish you know, a, a lighter line like this, make sure you have a soft rod. So when you do set the hook, that energy is absorbed by the rod and you know you get a good penetration with the hook set all right all right um how about uh your vertical jigging a bondi for a muskie Ooh, uh boy. threw you off there right i, I, I was did. trying to think what i could do so that he doesn't do a whole lot um is hmm. that or bourbon hmm. you know i was coming at you either one so at, at that point, I'm probably going to jump to a SmackDown with a gold label leader. Um, okay. I'd probably throw on a 30 or a 50 pound, um, probably a 50 pound gold label leader on um, probably a 30 pound SmackDown, um, just vertical jigging. The reason again, vertical jigging is with that SmackDown with a braid, uh, you're not going to have to worry about any current affecting you know that bow or giving you a bow, and you're going to be able to feel the slightest little bite if they come in and just mouth it. Um, you're not gonna have to worry about it. Typically when you're vertical jigging a fish like that, yep. it's not a, Ooh, there's a nibble. No, no, they hit it pretty good. <laughs> it's a, it's That's bam. why I'm honestly a little surprised at your 30 pound. You, you'll use 30, as I, light as 30 I, pound I, I for, use, for musky fishing? Yep, 30 yeah. pound. Wow. Um, if, uh, the, if the circumstances are right, when we're you know finesse fishing those muskies, yep. um, vertical jigging tubes or whatnot over the side of the boat, yep. I'll drop down to 30 pound. Wow. Um, you do take a risk of, of breaking off, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I just think, again, trying to keep those baits natural, right? If you start going to the 50, 80, 100 pound, um, you've got a really thick piece of line up above there. That bait does this versus you know the Which nice softening be. and more natural presentation. All right, to close it out, at the end of this month, I'll be coming back here to your great state of Wisconsin, all right? I'm gonna be going up to Door County. I'm gonna try to get into those big schools of 100 smallies that are supposedly out there in the fall. I, I was told if it's calm, we'll do some drop shotting. So get me a rig if it's calm. And then I heard if it's blowing out there, which they say can get fun if it is, <laughs> you get throw a big one ounce or one and a half ounce spinner bait. So those seem like two pretty drastic different ways of fishing. So what do I need to what do I need to go pick up for this trip? So if you're going to be up there on up in Door County, most likely you'll probably be up in like Rowley's Bay or yep. whatnot. Um, you're going to be making long casts away from the boat. What's neat about that though is water is gin clear and you can see the fish from a long ways away. Mm -hmm. So you're sight fishing. You want to be able to cast a long ways. This would be your main line, and then depending on what you're going to be doing, the probably PX8. Uh, yep, the PX8. Um, and you know, if you, if you're going to go up there, you've got that chance of that fish of a lifetime. Yep. I'd pair it right up with a Grand Max leader, and you would be set to go. Um, now, if you're going to be out over the deep and you know you're throwing, yep. I'd probably still stick with the uh, the PEX, okay. and I'd probably go to a Gold Label leader. Um, on that spinner bait, a little uh, more for the abrasion. A little, yep. Yep. Um, otherwise, just uh, throwing a straight uh, tatsu um, in, you know, uh, a ten to twelve pound, 
Um, you know, again, those smallies up there can, uh, they're going to, they're going to rival with the walleyes. You're going to find some big walleyes in those same spots and you know, you never want to lose a fish. So, Hey, I'm never upset with a big walleye when I'm bass fishing, you know, and the pike, you know, the thing with, with that time of the year in the fall is you've got the chance of a legitimate, you know, 40 inch plus pike up in the, up in the bay there. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's something so cool about fishing the great lakes in the fall. Pike, musky, walleye, salmon, trout, perch. I mean, yep. they all come shallow, so it's really fun. Well, hey, Troy, I want to thank you for uh, sitting down and talking yeah, to us guys. about Seaguar Line today. Um, if anyone wants to check out you or any of uh, book you as a guide, how do they find your information? Sure. Um, real easy. You can just type in Mr. Bluegill on a Google search. Otherwise, uh, mrbluegill.com is a website. And if you want to see any more from Seaguar, um, you can just go to seaguar.com. Everything's on there. They've got a great line selection uh, chart or like a line selector. You can type in your information and it'll spit out the line that you need. All right, everyone. Well, hey, that is Troy Peterson, AKA Seaguar Pro, Mr. Bluegill. And wanna thank him again for allowing us in his pretty sweet man cave here. Guys, we're gonna throw it to commercial real quick, but we're gonna be right back to wrap up this week's show. We'll see you then. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's mwomag.com. From the company that brought innovation to the ice fishing world with their advancements in LED and glow technology, now brings you a new eco-friendly biosilicone bait that is infused with terabyte. A proprietary solution comprised of amino acid, omega-3, and pheromones that will generate more strikes, which equals more fish. For more information, visit fishdaddyoutdoors.com. Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, we made it back to the studio. And again, what an incredible week out of the studio it was um, between the National Freshwater Spear Fishing Championships, which we will revisit next episode. So make sure you come back and talk about that because I saw some things that truly you can't even make up. I mean, it was to get that fish eye view underwater is unlike anything else. And a special thanks to Troy again for welcoming us into his home and sitting down and talking about the importance of line. You know, I still remember the first time that I bought my first box of Red Label Cigar Line. It was at a Bass Pro Shops in Bolingbrook, Illinois after our Off the Hook Junior Bassmaster Club. Um, those were great times, let me tell you. Those boys that we fish with then, they're all doing awesome things now. Um, half are still doing tournaments or working in the fishing industry, so pretty cool stuff right there. And special thanks to Seaguar for making this episode happen. If you guys haven't before, go experiment with some line, okay? Um, if you've never used fluorocarbon before, if you've never used braid before, this is a perfect time. It's the off season. You can get used to flipping it or casting it around a little bit in the backyard or in some ponds. As the weeds start to die, there's less carnage in your way. Um, but like we talked about in this episode, there's tons of different applications and reasons to use different lines, whether it's the make of the line or the size of it. So play around with that this year, get more comfortable with your line and know your equipment even better. Now, we didn't start this show like a normal show, so I wanted to run down some of the news real quick, all right? Uh, we'll stop at the tournament world first. We touched on it, I don't think we gave it enough whether you love him or hate him, Jacob Wheeler, the most dominant fisherman we've ever seen in my 31 years of life. And that's hard to say because as a younger guy, paying attention to tournament fishing, I thought KVD could never be beat. Even though I know there was some numbers that roll in and some of the old other guys did before his time, in the present, it felt like Michael Jordan. But yet now, the numbers and the frequency of winning and high finishes that Jacob Wheeler does puts Kevin's numbers to shame. Some will say 
it's a different playing field now. It is definitely a different series, right? The all fish counts. Um, definitely different with the forward facing sonar, but everyone else has the same equipment. Everyone else has the same opportunities. And yet, Jacob Wheeler has now come in first place for standings, Angler of the Year, three of the last four years. And the one time he didn't do it, he fell just short at second place. Um, I saw a number that MLF put out that over 70% of his finishes in his career at MLF have been over top 10. So 70 some percentage of all his finishes of all time have been in the top 10. That's a good way to make a lot of money. But Jacob gets enough press, so let's move it on. Um, the most important thing um, before we continue is I do want to say uh, all our prayers and our thoughts go out to everyone that had been affected by Hurricane Helene. Um, obviously, it made horrific landfall in Florida and then what the rains and the mud uh, slides have done in the Carolinas, in Tennessee, Georgia, it's devastating. Our hearts go out to you guys. Um, you know, do whatever you can to help that area. But as the fishing news, obviously it did a big thing, you know. Um, you didn't have to watch the news channel to see if you watched the migratory bird chart none of the birds flew east of the ohio um the ohio valley and it all stayed west you know so that area has just been so devastated and um, again all of our thoughts and prayers are with you guys but because of that weather we did have some events change so i want to get that out to you guys the npfl national professional fishing league um, they have moved their second to last stop that was supposed to be last week um, on the St. John's River in Florida. It will still be on the St. John's River, but not until December. So the anglers that are used to having everything hashed out and know how they finished in AOI standings, you guys are going to have to wait till December this year to find that out. Uh, Bassmaster Open also moved. Um, same dates. It's going to be next weekend. So we'll talk about that on the upcoming podcast. But it was scheduled for Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. It will now be on my old home lake, Lake Martin. All right. That's down in Alabama. So a few changes because of the storm. Um, also tournament news, switch gears from the bass to the walleye. The NWT, the season is over. Looking back, what an awesome year. Um, of course, John Hoyer uh, finished in the top a lot. We got to see his name. But Tom Tom Hume also was in the top a lot this year. And he, with 58 pounds, 10 ounces, took home the championship on Lake Huron. So congrats to that big trophy. And Hunter Nitty, you're riding around in a brand new Nitro now because he was the progressive angler of the year for the NWT this year. And uh, that wins you a nice boat with a 300 Merc on the back. So I'm sure he's not upset about that winning at all. Um, that's going to do it for the tournament updates, everyone. We haven't had any records to speak of yet. However, next episode, we are going to start gearing a little bit into the hunting. And we're going to talk about some, we're going to talk about, to a couple young ladies about some record bear that they have taken in their careers. One career is a little older, one career is a little younger, but it's gonna be entertaining. And speaking of hunting, this week we had a lot of our Midwest states open up deer hunting. So good luck in the field, in the stands, in the blinds, wherever you are, and hey, send those pictures to us. If you haven't yet, make sure you like and subscribe, not only the podcast, but go subscribe to our Instagram or Facebook page and DM us your pictures, whether it's your big catch of the week or it's your first deer or your biggest deer. We want to see it. Well, guys, that is the end of this week's show. As always, I want to thank Fish Daddy for making the show happen. And this week, especially Seagar as the show sponsor. And that's a wrap, everyone. So I look forward to seeing you guys on the water. Until next time, I'm Jim O'Neill, Tight Lines.